Well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, continue on in the vein that uh, Peter just gave. He gave you a very nice uh, uh, introduction and then a, a, a good overview of uh, some of the work that he's been uh, doing. So now that you're all catalysis experts, I don't need to, uh, to go through that. What I'd like to do uh, uh, this morning with my uh, uh, 10 minutes is uh, talk a little bit about uh, one of the uh, projects we're working on in my group, how we're integrating a lot of work uh, going on throughout uh, Argonne National Lab, and also uh, how we can, uh, we are, and uh, in the future will work together uh, more with uh, the people at Northwestern. Uh, for this talk, what I'd like to do is concentrate on one of my four main uh, uh, projects uh, going on right now, and that's a BES-funded uh, project uh, looking at uh, uh, steam reforming of uh, methanol to form uh, hydrogen. Okay, Some of the uh, potential reactant uh, reactions that can go on are shown here. As I said, this is a BES-funded uh, uh, project, Okay, but it does have some actual uh, applications uh, oriented because uh, this uh, reaction here is being investigated for, uh, for things like fuel cell applications for portable devices and possibly even onboard reformers uh, for uh, uh, applications in the transportation industry. Okay. Uh, within uh, the catalysis uh, section, uh, we tend to uh, try to cluster uh, four different components uh, in the catalysis work that we uh, do, and that, that's shown by these uh, four puzzle pieces, uh, which uh, uh, form the, the basis of actually our EFRC proposal, which we're hoping to hear uh, positively uh, soon. Uh, but we try to take, uh, uh, encompass all four of these uh, uh, processes in, in a given uh, uh, project proposal and uh, make uh, th these uh, things feed together as Peter uh, alluded to in uh, his talk there. Uh, the first thing that we of course need is new materials and we're working uh, extensively with people like uh, Jeff Elam in the uh, Energy Systems Division. Uh, and specifically we're interested in making anatomically, atomically uh, uniform uh, catalysts. Okay, not anatomically. <laughs> so, uh, and these uh, are on high uh, surface area materials. As uh, Peter alluded to, we need to make lots of new materials so we can actually uh, start to uh, look at these. Uh, within my group, uh, we're very interested in in situ characterization uh, uh, for uh, understanding the chemical and uh, catalytic nature of uh, these materials under real working conditions. And we make extensive use of the advanced photon source to tell whether we've got monomeric uh, platinum, as you see in these uh, low loading materials, or clusters of uh, platinum, as you see at the, the, the higher uh, loadings here. And how does that relate to the catalytic activity of uh, these types of materials? Okay, uh, we can't call any uh, new material a catalyst until we've actually put it into a reactor and uh, find out what comes out the, uh, the back end. And we do a lot of performance uh, measurements to uh, n note whether the cat what the catalytic activity and what selectivity of those materials are. Especially, we're doing a lot of work uh, nowadays with uh, oxidation, and as Peter uh, mentioned, an oxidation chemistry selectivity is the whole name of the game. Okay, if it's non-selective, you make CO and CO2, and we, nobody wants to make that. Okay, so uh, we do a lot of uh, catalyst. Uh, and finally, quantum chemistry is uh, used uh, extensively, especially with uh, the group of uh, Larry Curtis and Peter Zappel, okay, to, to uh, hopefully understand on a, uh, a molecular basis uh, what uh, the type of phenomena we're seeing in the characterization and performance, and hopefully feed back to people like Jeff Elam what we need to make uh, from that. Uh, the key right now is we're trying to get the quantum chemistry to not be uh, just interpolative, but be extrapolative and give us uh, answers about what we need to make next, not just to explain what we're uh, uh, working on uh, in the present tense there. As I said, uh, we're working right now on uh, a palladium uh, reforming catalyst, and we make uh, extensive use of the APS. Uh, here is some Zane's uh, spectra of uh, the palladium reducing from palladium 2 to palladium 0. And you can see that the palladium reduces here at around uh, 250 degrees. Okay, and uh, not only can we tell what temperature this uh, material is reducing, depending on the size of the cluster and the, uh, the type of the support, uh, we can actually quantitate on the amount of palladium 2 and palladium 0 at any given temperature. And that's highly related to the activity and selectivity of uh, these catalysts. 
Okay, not only can we tell the oxidation state of that, but by analyzing these squiggly lines out here, which is called the exafs region, okay, we can tell what the nature of the clusters are on uh, top of those materials. As we synthesize these materials, they're essentially platinum-2 oxides, highly dispersed over the, uh, uh, the surface of the zinc oxide. Uh, when we reduce it uh, down to the point at which it starts being reduced uh, here at about 210 degrees, we start forming uh, small clusters of palladium. Okay, uh, when we start seeing palladium, palladium metal being formed on here, okay, and there is a, a small interaction with the zinc uh, that's uh, forming uh, on those materials. Heating it up further in the presence of uh, hydrogen, uh, what happens is that palladium tends to sink down into the surface, and we lose uh, any uh, surface oxide layer uh, for that. And this uh, material right here is believed to be the, the most active uh, of the, the components here. We actually start forming palladium zinc alloys uh, from here. And a lot of what we're working on right now is understanding ways of making uh, more of this uh, palladium alloy uh, 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 formation at uh, lower temperatures uh, for this. Okay, so how can we uh, work uh, with uh, our colleagues uh, here at Northwestern? We have already been doing a lot of that already, and we're hoping in the future we can uh, do this a lot more because there's some excellent minds and some excellent techniques out here. In the area, in the area of uh, design and synthesis, uh, there's a lot of uh, new materials being uh, synthesized uh, uh, up here with some very interesting catalytic activities. I've emphasized one right now that we're uh, looking at with uh, Ken Popelmeyer. These are nanocrystalline strontium titanate materials. Okay, and what you see here is uh, a definite collaboration. Ken Popelmeyer made the nanocrystalline strontium titanates, and the little clusters there of uh, palladium on there uh, were made in Jeff uh, Elam's group, and uh, we then did some uh, catalytic testing and some of the in situ characterization of those materials. These materials have very interesting uh, uh, catalytic properties. They do uh, uh, com uh, complete combustion of uh, propane at about 100 degrees lower than standard uh, palladium or platinum type uh, catalyst. As far as characterization, there's some very unique spectroscopies uh, that are, uh, have been developed and being utilized here. I highlight one here. Mike Bedsick has been using X-ray standing wave atomic imaging. Okay, and which what he can do is he can uh, uh, tell these uh, uh, little dots here are the original starting positions for titanium and titanium oxide. Okay, and the uh, red and green indicates the movement of those materials when interacting either with temperature or with uh, interacting gases there. So we can tell what the changes are in those materials from that. Okay, as I said before, we're very interested in evaluations and mechanisms, and Harold Kung's group uh, does a lot of uh, good work, especially integrating performance and spectroscopies, as you see in this uh, plot right here. And then finally, we're very interested in a lot of the, uh, the, the new modeling techniques that are coming out. Uh, we've been working especially with Randy Snur and uh, Linda Broadbelt. Um, what you see up here is some work that uh, we did with Randy a couple of years ago in which we were modeling uh, the uh, movement of uh, various types of molecules down the pores of these uh, nanoliths that uh, Peter showed you a picture of a few minutes ago. Okay, and what we found was that uh, an individual molecule uh, comes in and out of those pores many times before, before it finally e exits out the back end. So this changes the whole mode in which we understand the uh, catalytic chemistry that's going on for these mi type materials. So finally, uh, in a summary here, uh, we're very interested in working with the research faculties uh, and students because, first of all, this, uh, the faculty here is top-notch, especially in the area of catalysis. And as I've uh, uh, found in comparison to other universities I've dealt with, the faculty here is very interested in working collaboratively uh, with us. Okay, we can uh, get a whole series of uh, new materials. I didn't mention the or some of the organometallic materials that uh, we've been working with with Tobin Marks and su su sub, uh, various types of supported metals and supported supports like uh, uh, we've been working with with uh, uh, Ken Popelmeyer. Some of the unique spectroscopies I've uh, mentioned, such as stand, X-ray standing wave and the high-resolution TEM uh, techniques that uh, um, Lori Marks has developed, and we're working uh, uh, with uh, Lori's group uh, right now on some, some of the uh, supported palladium stuff. 
We've been doing some uh, uh, improved performance analysis uh, with uh, people like Harold Kung, and we're especially interested in the expanded modeling and capa uh, uh, capabilities such as molecular dynamics and uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulations such as what we've been uh, doing with uh, uh, Randy Snurr and Linda Broadbelt there. So with that, I'd uh, finish up with what I'm talking about, and I'll open the court.